Thank you. It's an honor to be here today. I'd just like to take a moment to share a little bit of our story in trying to address in our community how to make it more welcoming and to uh, help integrate immigrants into our fabric of our community. A little bit about our story. First of all, most people probably think of the YMCA here in the United States as a place where you can go for some exercise or for a swim. Uh, for our YMCA, we have no gym and we have no pool, so you don't come to our YMCA for that. We really focus on leadership development. We work on a University of Illinois campus, and our role in life is really to take what students are learning in the classroom, the skills and knowledge that they're gathering, and then apply it into the community where they can develop leadership skills and help lead and make for a better world. We focus their work in four basic areas. Um, the first is working for social justice. The second is protecting the environment. The third is encouraging global engagement. And then the fourth is promoting interfaith collaboration. Our organization uh, really got drawn into the issue of immigration through our students as we have over our 145 year history. We've been active in the civil rights movements and the anti-war movements uh, over the generations. Each generation of students has its own focus and interest. The work of our students in the last seven or eight years has often emerged out of immigration. Specifically, one of our student programs, La Colectiva, which is Latino students at the University of Illinois, most of them from the Chicago area. And they came to us about seven years ago and said, you know, we're doing all this organizing on campus, we're getting people involved and concerned about the DREAM Act, but we really feel like we're doing it within a bubble on the university campus. And we know in our community there's a growing Latino population that's out there. Their families are struggling the same way as our family did uh, in Chicago. And we want to be more engaged in the community. So we set up our students to go out and interview people in the community who work with immigrants in our school districts, social service agencies, small nonprofits, and over the course of the summer of 2010, they interviewed about 40 or 50 people, uh, began to identify some of the common themes and problems facing immigrants in our community. Out of that grew three initiatives. The first was a We Dream mentoring program at the local high school where Latino students were uh, mentoring high school students to help them see that there's a way that they could better themselves through education. The second one was the creation of a Spanish language helpline in our community at the Y called La Lina, the line, where people could call and in their own language speak to someone and get assistance, whether it's housing, healthcare, immigration issues. And then the third initiative that grew out of the work of our students was the CU Immigration Forum, which is a local nonprofit that still exists today that really focuses on advocating on behalf of immigrants and immigrant rights in our community, trying to lift up their work and their impact on our community in a positive way. The work over the last few years has been on a variety of things. We've focused on helping DACA students become eligible uh, for uh, staying here in the United States under the DACA program. But we are also tackling issues that immigrants often face in our communities that are less positive. Um, back, in 19, or back in 2011, one of the issues that emerged out of the conversations happening in our community was that uh, when someone would get stopped and an immigrant would get stopped by the police, they would often then be pulled off and put in jail uh, and sent off to uh, ICE in Chicago. One of the issues, one of the programs that had been started in the Bush uh, administration was called Secure Communities. The idea was that we're gonna do is we're gonna just round up those criminals who are immigrants in our community and don't have papers to be here, and we're gonna take them and we're gonna send them away. A noble uh, idea. Unfortunately, what data found and what we found in our community is that three quarters of the people who were being stopped and turned over to ICE had no criminal record whatsoever. They were contributing members of our community. One story in particular galvanized our community in a way that we hadn't seen for years. Uh, it was a young woman, I'll refer to her as Alejandra. Uh, she was a mother of two children. Uh, she was undocumented in our community. She was hoping for a better life for both of her children when she came here. One Saturday afternoon, while on the way to pick up her son at a soccer game, she was in a small fender bender. Someone hit her from behind, uh, and they pulled over and started exchanging information. The person who was in the accident with her happened to be an off-duty police officer who saw that she had a Mexican identification card. He called the local police. They came, handcuffed her, and took her off to jail. Now, she hadn't done anything wrong. She hadn't committed any crimes. She was in a small fender bender. She sat in that jail from that Saturday morning until the following Tuesday. During that period of time, her son, who was at the soccer practice, was wondering what happened to his mother. He sat there, all the other players left, 
He sat there with his coach. They waited and they waited. Finally, the coach took the son to a friend of the family and let him stay there, unsure of what happened to their mother that day. Eventually, we learned that she was being held in the county jail. Through CU Immigration Form, our local advocacy group, we started putting pressure on the sheriff. Under the uh, Secure Communities program, they could only hold her for 24 hours for ICE to come and get her if ICE had a record on her. When ICE didn't come, they continued to hold her for three more days, which violated the federal program. When we notified the sheriff that he was in violation of federal law, he released her. She told the story later of how she left the county jail that day, it was raining, and she ran three miles home to be with her children. I have to pause because this is an upsetting story. This woman saw her life before her, came here because she wanted her children to have a better life, to get a college education. What happened to her was unjust, and it sort of evoked in our community a response that this is not the way we want to be as a community. The sheriff, recognizing the problems with the program, withdrew. He was a Republican sheriff. He withdrew from secure communities and said this is not what he signed up for, that they were to be holding criminals to develop a new American Welcome Center model. This model takes the idea that immigrants are here, they want to be part of our society, they want to be fully integrated into our society, and so they identified five key pathways in which immigrants can feel more uh, part of our society. The first is through education and language. The second is health and well-being. The third is through citizenship and civic engagement. The fourth is through employment and economic and integration. And the fifth is community development. So the YMCAs who've been chosen for this, and we're one of 12 in the United States to pilot this program, use five way, or four, three ways in which we address these five areas. One is through providing direct services, one is through referrals, and the other is through community development and community building activities. This framework, though, recognizes that it's not just services that we need to be providing immigrants. The analogy of Welcoming America, our national partner on this, is that if you want to plant and you want to plant a seed and you want it to grow and thrive and be a healthy plant, uh, it takes outside resources such as sunlight and water. But if the soil is rocky and if it's clay-like, those roots will never take and the plant won't thrive. It's important that we recognize part of our work is making sure that the receiving communities, the soil in which the seed is being planted, are receptive that that soil is being toil toiled and tilled and that it's rich and is accepting of the seed and helps it grow. So part of our work is not just addressing the needs of immigrants, but it's also working with our community, making sure that we're receptive, that we're culturally sensitive, and that we're working to integrate everyone and to be part of our community. For the YMCA at the University of Illinois, we don't provide a lot of services in terms of pools or daycare. We really work around leadership development, engaging our students. So our approach to this really took the idea that what we wanted to do was engage our institutions in our community. For the last six years, we've been working with small nonprofits that are providing services or advocating on behalf of immigrants in our community. But what was really lacking was that the institutions, the University of Illinois, the cities of Champaign and Urbana, our county government, our hospitals, our school districts, often weren't involved in those same activities. That it was critical that we would convene all of these interest groups to talk about how we make our community a welcoming one for immigrants. Our board uh, includes six key constituencies. One is elected officials. We feel it's important that the elected leaders in our community be sitting around the table talking to those of us who are working with immigrants and immigrants themselves. A second group is the faith leaders in our community. One of the things that has been very encouraging to us is that the faith communities very much share the same common values when it comes to welcoming the stranger and have been more than receptive and involved in it. And we have involvement of the Muslim community through mosques and the local uh, uh, mosque. We have the Jewish community and the Hillel Center. We have the Hindu community, Christian community, Catholic community, all very involved in the project. We've also worked to uh, include businesses. Too often we think of business as economics and not connected to the people who they employ. 
But we find in our community that businesses are needing employees. Our unemployment rate is down. They're looking for workers. We have immigrants that are looking for jobs. Somehow we have to bring that together. We have to provide the skills to immigrants to be able to take those jobs. We have to work with employers so that they're culturally sensitive and know how to reach out to key communities uh, and then recruit future workers. We have high-tech employers who are looking for skilled workers uh, who are working on living on visas in the United States. How do they get to stay here? We also have uh, in, included in this uh, public sector institutions. So we want the schools, we want the park districts, all involved in the work that we're doing. And then finally, we have immigrant leaders in our community. We want to make sure that the Mexican community is represented, the Guatemalan community, the Indian community, uh, the Muslim community, all walks of life involved in it, and we have them represented on our board. For the last six months, we've been working on developing a community-wide integration plan. We're focusing on those six areas, and I'll just touch on some of them and then uh, turn it over to the next speaker or open up for questions. The first is around language and education. Part of what we're trying to do is bring together all these various interest groups in our community to talk about the needs that our community is facing and to talk about how we can do a better job as a community. One of the things that we learned is ESL, English language classes, uh, often end during the school year and there's nothing going on over the summer. As a result of recognizing that that need, our local library started holding conversation sessions over the summer so people could keep uh, active with their language acquisition skills. In the area of citizenship and civic engagement, one of the things that we identified is there were no instruction classes about how you become a citizen of the United States. What is that test like? How are you, how are you sure that you're prepared to take the test? So we have now received funding from the United States uh, federal government to organize the first citizenship instruction classes that will begin in our community in June. We're also working with local community college in terms of certification of people who come from other countries who are skilled and have, uh, they might be a doctor or a lawyer or a professional in their community. When they come here, they're not qualified. How do we help them bridge that gap and get the various qualifications that they need to be able to pursue their profession here in the United States? In the area of health and well-being, we've identified the problem. One of the problems that our community faces is that the frontline staff often are not culturally sensitive and language sensitive. So we're developing a training session for the, uh, the, for the local community health agencies for their frontline staff. In the area of community development, we've been selected as one of the community, 25 communities with Welcoming America and the New American Economy to develop a community-wide integration plan. Later in March, we'll be releasing a report and a study that will talk about the impact uh, of immigrants in our community, the jobs that they create, the taxes that they pay, the positive contributions to our community. And finally, around community development. Again, part of this is we often don't interact enough with each other, but we want to bring people together. So there's a week every September that I would encourage all of you to go back to your communities and think about being part of called Welcoming America, Welcoming Week. Uh, during that week, we try and encourage people, both long-term residents and immigrants to our community, to come together around a variety of events. Last September in our community, we had 65 community partners organize 35 events that included 2,500 people at those events, uh, just to bring people together and to share their perspectives on the world. I guess what I would like to share is that when our communities come together, when we involve key decision makers in the, the conversation, as well as the immigrants themselves, that we can make a better world for all and make people feel welcome to our communities and engaged and part of the fabric of our life. Thank you very much.